Welcome to the Julia and Gino podcast, where business meets family. We explore what the entrepreneurial life looks like from a family perspective. We are your hosts, Julia and Gino Barbaro. Hey everyone, this is Julia Barbaro, host of the Julia and Gino podcast. I'm here with the co-founder of Jake and Gino, my husband and co-host, Gino Barbaro. Julia, I pulled up the bio. I thought I was going to let it rip. I haven't done a lot. I just want to ask you one question. Are you in a mood today? Uh, well, I'm always in a mood. Okay. Oh, are you in the mood? The though? mood too. To Talk, be nicer be to nice. me. Oh, I am so nice. All right. Uh, yes. Axel, let's let this rip. <laughs> Today, we have the honor of welcoming James Nelson, one of New York City's top investment sales brokers, master real estate investor, and the author of The Insider's Edge to Real Estate Investing. Holding up for all you YouTubers out there. James has received numerous awards to include the Deal of the Year Award by REBNY, and he's launched two real estate funds. On top of all that, He's a family man who loves spending time with his wife, Allison, and their three sons. Welcome to the show, James. Thank you so much. So, so great to be with you all. This is like the third time in what, a month? We It was <laughs> right. so wonderful that our mutual friend, Ryan Serhant, brought us together. We had so much fun at that Mastermind Summit. I got to work with your group and see, see you all in action and then to be able to come on your show and now to be able to reciprocate. And as I was telling you before, you know, maybe for a part two, I have asked my, my wife, Allison, if she might take a little bit of time, but we're going to see if we can get her on, on the next show. This is it. I know how much this fun you the, all have uh, d doing this together. This is the formal invitation, Allison. I know you're listening. We want you on the show because I am outnumbered and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> we got two people you. with moods, right? Okay, <laughs> that's, that's right. good. Let's bring it. But James, I'm not going to let you off the hook because everyone sees James Nelson. He's flashy. He lives in Greenwich. Great. I mean, I mean, listen, great marriage, three kids, one's going off to college, two real estate funds. But everyone, it wasn't so in the beginning for James Nelson. He was out there. He's a swimmer. means he's competitive. He was an English major. For those of you out there that say, you know what, is real estate for me? I can't do it. I'm a former pizza guy. We've got an English major here. And James, walk us through the story of, of having that job interview. There's two people. You're the second person. The guy in front of you said, no, you took it 17 years later. I don't want to give away the story. You're still there. You're crushing it. What was the passion with real estate? How did you get into real estate? So, you know, you're, you're, you're too kind because the, the story is actually worse than that in the sense that there, yes, there was two people who applied for the job and I was their second choice and the other guy did get the job. So I'm, I was just thankful that they hired us both. So that that's oh. that's what happened. I but, didn't but get he, that. I'm sorry. That but, but that no, clarifies okay. things. Okay, but, good. But he did, you know, and we always laugh now because he, after six months, he said, "This isn't for me." And like 17 years later, uh, they were kind enough to make me a partner, and we went on and, and did incredible things to, together. And so I'm always grateful for my my co-founders, uh, Bob Nackle and Paul Massey. And I, I know we'll, we'll we'll talk about those early years and, and all the life lessons I learned there. But yeah, I mean, this was my senior spring at Colgate University. All my friends had investment banking jobs. I thought I was going to go out to the West Coast and make movies or something. I had no idea. But what I did know is I had $5,000 in credit card debt. And the idea of just kind of going out to the West Coast and trying to make it happen was just not, not in the cards. So I said, all right, I better figure out and get a real job. So I did go to the Career Service Center late in the spring. I didn't even know real estate was a thing. I really didn't, uh, with the exception of, and we'll get to um, some of the stories about my grandfather, who was a, a huge inspiration for me. He definitely knew a lot about real estate. Um, but yeah, I went up there and there was that job posting, resumes due that day. So, you know, you got to believe that fate plays a role in all these things. You know, if I wasn't there that day, you know, maybe I showed up the next day. Who, who knows? Maybe I would be out uh on the west coast making movies who, who knows but I, i'm really happy with how it all turned out and um was very lucky to find a wonderful place to start a career and that was like one of the first big lessons it's like what you know you want to surround yourself with great people i know you all truly believe in that um and so i just got very lucky that i ended up at an incredible place now I'm going to have to, I have to go here. Was your wife involved in this? Did you know your wife? Were you married at the time? Not yet. Was, not yet. So no, no, okay. we, we, so we met shortly after I arrived in the city okay. and uh, she, uh, so, so again, we, at this point, I'm just starting out putting in a lot of hours. She was going and getting her master's degree. She was getting a master's in business. 
we met, she was a swimmer also, actually a much faster swimmer. Than, I, I went to Colgate, which, hey, was D1, but kind of like a little D1. Uh, so kind of medium-sized fish in a medium-sized pond. She swam for SMU. That's where all the Olympians go. So, um, yeah, so, so and, and maybe that had a small part. The and, and the I, know, well, that, I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, so, so, she's, so, cr no. she's crushing you is what you're saying, right? <laughs> There's a competition. It's good. She's Allison, That's right. crushing oh, she's, <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so we met and we had that swimming thing in common. We had friends in common. And, you know, just very, again, luck. That, that we both met each other very early on, right right out of college and um, were married shortly thereafter and kids in the city, our, our first was born in the city. And then when um, she was pregnant with our second, then we, we moved up here to Connecticut. So yeah, that was uh, 20 plus years ago. So let's talk about how you started in the real estate business. And I love the story because those of you out there looking to get into real estate, there are two ways to do it. You either pay to play or you seek to serve. And I love what James talked about at the mastermind, because there's a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice that goes in on the front end. And in the book, you talk about success comes from learning and becoming an area expert. And that's exactly what you did. And it didn't take that long looking about it. The first three or four months going in and, and photographing every single building, understanding the layout, knowing the median income, knowing the rents. Can you talk about that, that process and that journey when you started out? Sure thing. Yeah. And it was actually... I didn't get to that three month period of studying the territory in, in, until after two years when, well, it was actually a year and a half, a year and a half being a sales associate. So my job description was go in, work for one of the senior partners and whatever it took, if it was making marketing books, which was not only creating the materials, but physically compiling marketing books together, stuffing mail, because back in the day, you know, when I started 25 years ago, there wasn't blast email, right? There wasn't email newsletters. We sent out blast faxes and we did yeah. lick. I mean, the <laughs> amount of mail that I've stuffed over my career is, I mean, you, you could, you could fill, uh, you know, my, my entire house, but, um, yeah. So, so, but the most important thing is that year and a half, even if I was doing, you know, basically whatever job they needed me to do for me, that was better than an MBA because I was listening. The fact that I sat five feet away from the co-founders right? And we were all on an open floor and I could just listen and absorb to how they did business. And so not only did I learn by listening from them, but I learned how to do business in the right way. And so by the time it was, um, and at that point I, I did have a, a modest salary with a little bit of bonus sprinkled in, but by the time I was ready to transition a year and a half later, I said, James, you're ready to go off and be a salesperson. Luckily, I had a couple deals under my belt, so I didn't have to go through that stretch. A lot of the salespeople, and if they're listening to the show, they can remember what it was like to start off full commission where, you know, commercial, it's a much longer deal cycle than residential. You know, residential maybe, and look, residential is tough too, but a lot of my friends who do residential, they got in, they started with, with rent rentals, right? Where they could just knock out a couple rents, get, you know, get some commissions under their belt, then they do some sales. But commercial, it's a much longer stretch. So we used to tell people who were starting full-time as salespeople, look, don't expect to make money for the first year. That's tough. So I, I had definitely a head start. But when I was ready, they said, okay, let's pause, time out, okay? For the next three months, you're going to study the Chelsea neighborhood in Manhattan. And you're going to get to learn everything about the area. Study every single sale. And this, this was before the days of Google Earth. So yes, you're right. I had to go through and take a photo of every single building write it down in a, you know, on a piece of paper, three ring notebook. And you all are listening to this right now, you know, and anyone who's, you know, 30 years or under uh, are saying that's crazy. That must, that was so much time wasted. Not really. Okay. Let me tell you something, canvassing and walking every single block and looking at every building and writing down every owner's contact information. Talk about learning something. I mean, I, I, databases are great, but this database that's up here, uh, is, you know, that that has stayed with me for my entire career. And a lot of the clients I've done multiple deals with, I met them very early on when I made that uh, initial approach. But, you know, Gina and Julie, what I, I told your group at the Mastermind was even though I was still as green as can be, after three months studying an area, I could run circles around the veterans who've been doing this for decades because, and that's the whole, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. So they, they were doing, hey, I'm, I'm a broker. I can do it all. I cover the whole city. And that's what I was trying to share with your investors. 
right? Your, your investor students is pick a neighborhood, become an expert, and you're going to have that competitive advantage. I love that. And I like, so the, I like the way the show is going because it's not all about emotions. We usually talk about <laughs> family. So this was a little bit more real estate and a little bit more okay. business. So I know we're going to get there, but my question here, I, I heard something that really, good. I, I, like I heard this. something that really popped in my, my ear and I want to really want you to expand upon this. You said doing business in the right way. What does that mean to James Nelson? Yeah, no, I, I think it should mean the same thing for, for everyone. I mean, it's just um, you, you always want to do the right thing, even when things are challenging. I think that's oftentimes when people show their real stripes and whether it's business, life, or whatever it is, I mean, there, there's going to be challenges, like nothing ever goes perfectly 100% of the time. So how do you react in those challenging times when you're when you're tested? And, you know, as a, as a broker, it is always putting myself in my client's shoes and doing right by them. Uh, if you're in it just for yourself, right? And if so, if you're for the investors listening or anyone who's, you know, with their family life or whatever it is, if you're only doing what's best for you and you're not thinking about the people around you, that's a very short-sighted way to live life. Also, it's not a very happy way to live life, right? You might get all the kind of cash and prizes initially, but like, you know, there, there's a much bigger picture. Um, and so always just taking that long view where, you know, again, putting yourself in the other person's shoes, making sure that that you you make the right decision for them. On the book, when you told Allison, hey, Allison, I want to write this book. Well, two questions. Why did you write the book? What made you write the book? And what did she say to you when when you when you asked her when you told her? So, yeah, the book came out of COVID uh, right afterwards where I'm, I'm sitting at home. This is probably like month two. I'm a big fan of coaching. Uh, one of my coaches and mentors, Blaine Strickland, who's also written two incredible books, Thrive and Adapt. I'm talking to him and he says, James, do you want, um, and we didn't know how long we were going to be in this for. We're all, you know, cooped up at home. Um, I can only imagine. I, I know you have six kids. So you, you have to, you know, well, tell us about what those, those, yeah. Yeah. What those days were like. Florida, but it's a little different. <laughs> okay, so they can at least run around. But yeah, so we're we're all cooped up here. He said, James, do you want to just try to outlast this thing and just you know try to hang in there, or do you want to actually take advantage of this time? Because when in your life are you ever going to have a chance to do something, you know, different, or you know, where you're not commuting to the city, working 60, 70 hours a week, and I didn't start the book, but I did start a podcast, which I didn't even know what a podcast was at the time. I hadn't listened to any. And I said, oh, wait, I can actually record conversations with people over this new thing, Zoom, and then we can put it out there into the whole, you know, in, into into the uh, the world. And so after I've been doing that for a couple of months, I said, wow, you know, there's some pretty good content here. Uh, I'd like to start putting this together in a book. And so asked uh, Blaine again and Rod Santa Massimo, another one of my mentors who, who have both written books. And I said, OK, you need a writing partner you know, reach out to Wally Bach and we're working on this book together. And we're a couple months into that, probably 100, 150 pages on talking about some of the, the best episodes, you know, lessons learned from these legends in the business. And I'm thinking, okay, wow, this is really great. This is inspirational, but doesn't actually tell you how to do it. I said, I got to write the how-to book, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and there's a lot of books out there that kind of tell you kind of the entry point, you know, I know, and you've you've had uh, Richard because um, the Rich Dad Poor Dad series and 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 all that and and kind of a lot of the you know entry level, but to really do a serious commercial real estate transaction, all the things that go into it, there's not a lot written on the topic. So I said I want to write the book. So went out um, and this was my friend Ryan Surhan. And sorry if this is a longer story than what you were looking for, but uh, got got an agent, got a book deal with McGraw Hill, got another writing partner. We went and wrote the book and. Uh, finally, uh, after probably about a year's worth of work, we, we launched it last week, uh, which was really exciting. And as far as what, what did my wife have to think about all this? Like, I, I think if she was on this show, she would tell you that it did not surprise her at all because it's like, I just don't stop, which, which is like, it can be good. And bad. like, I'm always just thinking of doing things. Right. And this was a way to channel it. Um, I do have to say, and if she was here with me right now, I would tell her, um, a, a huge amount of thanks because I realized this last month with the book launch and you all have several successful books out, you know how crazy it is to launch and get the word out there. And I'm taking time away from the family and this and that, like I have not, and, and I just got back from a, 
you know, I'm starting a book tour. So I was at Cornell University last night speaking of their master's program. All right. And, you know, but look, I wasn't home last night. You know, it took I drove four hours out there yesterday, four hours back today. And look, I, I'm I'm aware of that. So it's there are when you do things like this, there are trade offs in your personal life, and the family life. And there's a lot of talk out there. And Julia, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on kind of the live work balance because it, it's it's different for everybody but it's also different in seasons of your life and what i would say is this last month i know this has been insane getting this book out the door on top of a crazy market where all of our clients are like oh my gosh what is going on can you help me on top of this book launch thing um but i know by like next month or two it's gonna you know we'll have momentum the book you know, we'll start selling on its own and then, you know, definitely dedicate a lot more time for the, uh, for the family. So that was yeah. probably way more, you know, no, longer answer we wanted than to hear, for, for sure. Maybe no. that, that puts it in context. Absolutely. There's a lot you said in there. One of the things I do love is you took a situation you're in, in this case is COVID. I don't care what it is, but there's a lot of uncertainties that happen. I just spoke with someone who literally threw her back out and she's devastated. She can't do all this stuff. And I said, this is an opportunity. And a lot of the times we look at something that bad happens, whether it's just personal or like worldwide as, 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 oh no, there's nothing we can do here, but you took this opportunity and we could do this too, to make something amazing come out of it. If we choose to, you know, we could literally sit there and groan and, and complain and what all that stuff and, you know, throw your back out, you're in bed for, <laughs> for two weeks. It's a great opportunity to write a book. It's a great opportunity to start a anything that you're trying to do that you don't normally have time for. And you took that and did something amazing with it. So I just want to say that's amazing. That's the work-life balance, I think, especially you mentioned the seasons of life. And, and a lot of times when we're living life busy, our husbands are busy all the time. We're busy with the kids. It literally feels like that will never end. And this is always how it's going to be. We can never catch up and we start complaining and all that stuff. But I think it's important. And you mentioned this too, James, is to put yourself in that other person's shoes for a minute. You were talking about work. I'm talking about home life is if we can put, ladies, if we can put ourselves in our husband's shoes for a minute and see what it's like to live their life and their fears of, you know, supporting a family, whatever they are, we would have compassion instead of being irritated. Or, we, you know what I mean? That compassion, to get compassion for another person, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of self-reflection and saying, okay, let me look at it from the other person's view for a second. Um, but to know, and I promise you, because I've been there, <laughs> the children do grow up and things do change. And all of a sudden you're going to have time for certain things that you never did before. I mean, I would never have time to do this if this was even six years ago, but now I do. And, and I'm thankful for that. And I encourage everyone to just know that they're in a certain season right now. And in a few years, it will be different. And a few years after that will be different. So embrace where you are, whether it's crazy busy, just be part of it, be present with it. And to know that it's just temporary. Can did I that answer? Did I, that answer I think your... it did, but I, and I, work life balance. James could be part of the Jake and Gino team because he he sucks at technology, That's just true. like Jake and Gino. Yes, he he never stops working. That's he true. loves work. Okay, <laughs> uh, he wants to create. He can't get stuff out of his head. Right. That, that, that's all. All the things. There's Kindred so many spirits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many similarities, and, and no, never make excuses. Make it happen. Yes, right? right. Didn't know what a right. I didn't know what a podcast was when I started the podcast. That didn't stop me. Right. And and constant growth. Did he have to be at Ryan Sarhan's meetup mm -hmm. three weeks ago on a Saturday? No, he took time off to be there to actually promote the book and to spend time. So there's so many similarities there. And the work-life balance sometimes gets to me as well. But I know that if I'm happy at work and I'm very productive at work, I'll be a much better person at home. So that's the only that I can answer. I, if I'm like, I when I was at the restaurant, I was miserable toward the last couple of years of being at the restaurant. So when I went home, I wasn't myself. I wasn't my present self. So I may have worked less but being home, I wasn't as present. Doing what I'm doing now, I love what I'm doing now. I'm locked in. Too. I'm engaged. It also so. goes the other way. To have that, to be happy at home also brings it into your work yes. life as well. And that's why a lot of people, sometimes I feel like we only focus on one of them. Because that's all we can, you know, it's it's a lot of, it's an, it takes a lot of effort, doesn't it? To, to focus at home and work with, you know, your relationship with your wife and your kids. And then also work. So it does take a lot out of us. So what you're saying... Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah I, ahead, I was going to say it also takes a, a lot of, you know, just, just structure. And I, I think you do have to create 
boundaries and figure it out. Yeah. So, I mean, I get up crazy early every morning. So I'm up at 4.45 so I can do my workout and get on the train, get to work early. But then guess what? I'm on the train at like 5.15, 5.30 to go home. So I'm not, I'm not looking for the award for father of the year, but I, I'm getting home at 6.30 and then my phone goes off. Like, and people realize, hey, if you want to email or call me, you know, unless if it's a serious emergency, I'm not like working till 10 o'clock at night. Otherwise, look, I could do my job 24 seven, literally. Yes. I, I could just work forever because I know if I send an email out, I'm going to get two back, right? It's just, that's the way it works. So like, you got to carve it out. And um, I think the other thing, yeah, make make the time that you have together as a family uh, special and important. And, and so I actually, for that mastermind that we did, I hope you all didn't think I was just cutting out of lunch. I was actually meeting my wife and my youngest son for lunch. Then we went to go see a Broadway show. So like for that, it was like, Hey, okay, I'm going to the city. Well, let's, let's do something with that. So, you know, I, I, I do try to step it up, uh, you know, when I'm, I'm there with the family, but yes, uh, definitely looking forward to the years ahead when, when also Alice and I can get more time to, you know, spend together as well. And, you know, I remember when you were leaving, I asked you if you were saying, and you said what you said just now. And I was like, that's an awesome person. <laughs> and we talked about being on the podcast. I said, you know, I like this. And guy. she, she I, did you turn to me and go, well, you should do more of that. Did you? She didn't do that. He's like, and I, <laughs> it does say a lot. And like you said, in this day and age with the technology, with the cell phones, it, you literally can work all the time throughout the night. I mean, 24 hours for real. And I think that's a problem right now is that we don't know when to say enough. We have to take a break from from work and kind of balance that family life because it is tempting. I mean, I see my husband sneak on the phone sometimes and send some emails. The or social Jake. media thing is just killing me. I, yes, I get yes, it. I do. I get it. It's and the family too. It's, 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 it's like discipline. Yeah, it's really sure. tough. So for us, what we've done is I've tried to incorporate Jake and Gino and my job and incorporated my family into it. So they come to the live events. A lot of times they will come to these mastermind groups that we have and they'll, they'll come and travel with us and they'll be, they'll be part of it and i, I yeah. love to do that because it, and plus obviously having them in the deals but what i what really impressive about me but you is you've had some really great mentors i mean you must have invested a lot of money in your education out there rod santa massimo he's a great coach out there and your co-founder so i mean like you've actually and for everyone out there to get to that next iteration, to get to the next, you continue to invest in the education. And that growth mindset has been so apparent and putting that book out. There's a lot of work in getting a McGraw Hill, getting a published book. That takes a lot of work and effort and context. And it seems like you're really rich in relationships. Isn't that part of what multifamily and real estate is all about? Can you talk to, to me about that and the listeners, how it's so important and you have it in your book, uh, th those relationships uh, and working on that? Absolutely. And I, I really appreciate your, your saying that. And, you know, Rod has a, a saying, which is, um, you know, to, to really get off that transaction treadmill, you want to be able to work on your business or it could be your, your family life than in it. Right. So like when we're in it, right. And we're just trying to see what's next, just one foot in front of the other, you're not taking that step back. Right. So if I didn't have coaching, like there wouldn't have been that book, right? There wouldn't have been that opportunity to kind of have that big picture where it's like, you know, it's like the seeing the forest through the trees, right? So, I mean, that's definitely a huge part of it. And yeah, working with the, the right people. And it's like, what you find is, and I went to a really great conference that Rod put on down in Dallas. And it's like, when you have 300 people that are self-selected who are like, hey, I want to invest to make myself better, Every single one of the people there, they, they were all stars, right? And I'm sure you, in your network, it's the same thing. You know, it, it's not just a bunch of people who've signed up for education. It's a community, right? And so you start seeing, because these are people who want to go out of their way, right, um, to do something and, and, and also, you know, be a part of something bigger. So th there's definitely that aspect as well. This is going to be probably a family question, but I'm going to continue on the business line. I'm going to get, get a, more, a couple more business questions in here. How did you build a team? How did you start scaling up from, from early on days? And now I know you've got a huge team behind you and all. How did that process work out for you? Yeah, the, the, the team building is something I am passionate about. It, it's, you know, for me, and, and yes, I, I love brokerage. I love doing deals. I love investing in properties. But the actual building of a company, of a team, is really something that I just I just enjoy. Um, I, I love the leadership uh, aspect, and I I really I hope you know if you ask anyone on the team, they would say that 
you know, I, I, when I lead, I lead by example, right? So if it's like, if you're not actually doing what, you know, practice what you preach, right? So, um, but it's really, uh, you, you, first of all, you, you do need to find the right people, right? There are certainly team players and there's others out there who are lone wolves. And, you know, I know a lot of brokers and I'm sure there's investors and they just do their own thing and they're, you know, and that works for them. But, you know, that, that for me, uh, I think to, to be able to scale, finding good people who like to work together, who can complement each other, right? And it was interesting, like today I was on the phone with, you know, four people from, from the team trying to figure out, okay, how do we put this client report together? Because my right hand, she literally just had surgery on her right hand. And so she can't like type and put stuff together. So like, how are we all going to do this? And like, you know, and, I, and I'm talking to one of the more senior members on the team. He's like, James, I'm embarrassed to say, but I don't even know how to use Excel. He's like, I've got a, I've got a legal pad and I can write down notes. And he's very good. Like he will make calls. He will talk to people. But he's like, okay, Charles, you, you you write down on the piece of paper and then okay, take a photo of it, send it, you know, over to this person, you know, we're going to help get the reports together. So look, we all complement each other, right? If we all did exactly the same thing, if you had a, a team with 20 people, just like me, I mean, God help you, it, it would be, you know, pr pretty uh, over the top, but it's like, yeah, I mean, it, it's, that's what you want. You want to have... Um, a group that that they realize that they function better as the whole, and that that's like when when people want to join our group, and they they start asking a lot of questions about splits and everything. I say, look, if you just look to maximize and get the highest, you know, brokerage split, we're probably not the team for you. Like you you can just go and you know, there's shops out there where you can get a desk and a phone, and they'll let you keep whatever it is, 80, 90 percent of your commission if that's what you're looking to do. But the reason to come with us is because you can plug into this powerful platform where you could do triple the amount of business and have a lot more fun while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not for everybody. That's awesome. I, I love that because you, who you surround yourself with is, I mean, obviously business, but it happens to be in my kid's book, just saying, mm -hmm. you know, and also your mentor, how important is your mentor again in the kid's book, <laughs> mentor Moose is a, is a big character in there. It is so crucial. And then we have to teach our children that. And you, both of you men are leading by example. And I just want to kind of give you a little, you know, thank you, because we do need that in our family life. We do need mentors as the dad in our home. James, I got to get you on the show more often because my wife is giving me I props. Of, She's saying that she needs to be more compassionate towards I'm me. Just, I'm just serving the, the softball, <laughs> like, you know, slow pitch. Here you go. It really is. This is a great, this has been a great show for me. I'm like, Whoa. when this thing goes off, she's going to well, be like, I, mean, want, well. I want everyone to take a second and go to James Nelson's, uh, his, his podcast, because I think I was a little hard on him. Yeah, I think I was. Yes. Maybe it's the room. I don't know. Maybe she knows office downtown. Maybe that's what it is. It's awesome. Listen, James, you told me, you said right now before that your investors, everyone's freaking out. What are people freaking out specifically to you about right now in the real estate space, in the commercial space? I think it's really just uncertainty, right? And uncertainty breeds fear. And I think that's the number one thing that, and I know you, you all talk a lot about that as well and overcoming that fear by having actionable steps. But, you know, look, it's having done this for 25 years, I've, I've certainly seen market downturns. So I remember, you know, after 9-11, uh, depths of the financial crisis, COVID, I mean, but kind of how we're coming out of this and now with these interest rates spiking, I mean, it, it's, these are uncharted waters. And I, I think a lot of, um, for a lot of people, the gut reaction is just stop, right? And and Gina, I, I was listening to one of your your recent podcasts with Jake, and you're like, hey, if you, if you're not jumping in right now, like, how many times do you have to look back, rearview mirror, and say, why didn't I buy property in 2009, 2010? Like, and and so it's but but it's the fear, like the gut reaction is this is new, this is uncertain, I'm scared, so I'm gonna do nothing, <laughs> right? So. I think that's it. Like, you know, the, the the common response is, you know, James, it sounds great, but it's just it just feels early. Call me back in six months. I'm like, all right, fine. And then six months, everybody will pile back into the market. And let's not forget, it's about, you know, supply demand. So mm -hmm. that's really it. But like as a broker and advisor, I, I think I wouldn't say I enjoy these moments of uncertainty, but I think our job as trusted advisors is that much more important. I'm sure with all the coaching and support that you all do, you know, your, um, 
your, 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 your clients, they are in so much more need, right, of that guidance and that experience you can bring to the, the table. James, I like to tell people, you know, how many of you out there thought we were at a high in 2019? Oh, okay. How many of you thought 2020? Oh, we were at a high. How about 21? How about 22? You all said that you're going to wait till the market corrects. Well, here's your opportunity. So there's really no excuse for you not to take this opportunity because this is what you are all waiting for. But that comes down to the scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset. If you're scarcity mindset, you're always looking to grab as much as you can. You have that fear mindset. The abundance mindset is you can buy real estate at any time. You can't sell real estate at any time, but you can always buy it. You just need to understand what kind of strategies. Seller financing is coming more into vogue right now. Syndications, raising capital, the cost of capital is a little bit more. And I see my wife's eyes glazing over going, really, this is not the real estate show. But I just want to get that point out there because it's important because fear is, is you can use that as, as an example. But when you get older, you have the experience that we do. You just look back, market cycles, things cycle. They, they, they go up and they go down. We, we just just hadn't had a correction in over a dozen years because of COVID, but it's here and, and, and relish it. Go back and look at the history books. See what happened with interest rates. Rates are going to drop in the next 12 to 18 months once we get to an election. So take that into consideration. See what's going on. Don't wait. And, and for those of you investors out there, pick up the phone and start calling James and start creating the relationships with those brokers because when things do go sideways and you're on their radar, James is going to pick up the phone and call you with the deal. Because I've heard James say a lot of times, you know, I'm this show and even before he started recording he was lucky he was lucky there's no such thing as luck there's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of planning and then things will fall into place but if you're sitting back complacent and waiting to get into it it's never gonna happen anything to add Jill? well I, I i i you guys talk about uncertainty and all of that stuff and of course you're talking about business but it is home as well and I kind of want to touch that if we if we can find a touch it, baby. Go ahead, touch it. <laughs> because you know the two of you are talking about your, your your real estate journey and the uncertainty and the fear, and then is it the right time, James? What was it like at home when you were building your your business? When you know because I know there that was there in your relationship, and of course with your children and your home life. So give us an idea of how you handle that. And, you know, because obviously you're very successful in the business world with your team who you built. So how are you <laughs> building the team at home? Yeah, so I, I think, uh, and it's a great question. And early on, uh, and especially whether you're a broker, whether you're an investor and you're, you're working for yourself, right? And, and so there, there's, you know, you're getting off that W-2, you don't have that, you know, that, that salary, that safety net to rely on. And that, that can be stressful for sure. And, you know, certainly early on in my career, I, I don't want to say it was a mess, but like, I got so emotional about the deals and what's going to happen and not. And like, you know, after doing this for years, it's like, look, I can do everything, you know, my part, right? And then these, th you know, deals are going to take on a life of their own. They're going to go left, right, sideways. Yes, deals are going to die. And that's just part of it, right? So, you know, making the, you know, the, the correlation to family life, it's like the same thing. Like, look, of course, not everything's going to go your way. And there's going to be surprises. And I, I love your story about not the fact that your friend threw her back out, but like, how are you going to, you know, turn the positive, right? And so I think just, you know, having an understanding that that's what life is. And that that's like a really easy thing to say, like, oh yeah, life has ups and downs, of course. But th the fact that you kind of keep that even keel, right? And you're not riding that emotional roller coaster, which was like, and, and, and what's, you know, what comes along with that emotional roller coaster? It's stress, like just, you know, feeling like just like you're going to explode at any point. And that's not good either. Cause you bring that back home. Like everybody senses it. And I think early on and you know, even today to some extent, like if I have a, if I have a bad day, right. If things do not happen well, not that I, if a deal blows up, I'm, I'm certainly not happy about it, but I'm not going to go home and say, you know, Oh, I just lost out on this whole thing. I'm going to just keep it to myself. I'm probably not going to be in a great mood. So, you know, who knows? Am I like doing a service, kind of like hiding that and shielding that for my family? If it was like, hey, you know, or could it be a teaching moment with the kids? Like, hey, you know, dad didn't have a great day. Things didn't work out. You know what? That happens, right? And so, you know, no one's perfect. So mm -hmm. I think that is really the key is 
you know, being open about that and just, you know, it, it's okay to have a bad day and be able to work through these things. That's a tough one because for me, when I have a rough day, I just, sometimes I get a little annoyed and my, my, my patience wavers and she's laughing and it just, it's very difficult. You have a lot to say. You have a lot to say. Thank God we're almost signing off. So she doesn't have a lot to say here. So, but it's, it's challenging because you don't want to put the burden. You're like, you came home, you have a rough day and things don't work out. And like you said, you lost a deal and this person's leaving and it's just, it, is, it, 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 it can come compound on you but i think you're right i think you have to be open and and try to have that dialogue with your wife i really do what do you have to say i have Hit to me. say something okay so as a wife i'm home with the kids and i know your wife works and i'm sure she goes through a lot she's a school teacher so i can't even imagine that <laughs> but we want to know we want to know how your day goes and i went through this because my husband had the restaurant for years and years and he worked with his mom who always taught him oh. don't go home and, and bother your wife about the problems at work leave them at work and I found out about that and I was horrified. I'm like, wait a second, what? I'm like, no, I want to know. I want to know your difficulties. I want to be part of them, if that makes sense. I want to be part of, and I'm not saying the solution, but we're in this marriage together. I want to know what the day is, even if it was a challenge, because I want to be here to support you. And I won't know it unless you tell me. And I think, you know, and I'm not talking about every little thing that happens. I'm just talking about the major, you know, I'm having home, coming home in a, in a, in a, in a bad mood. I want to know the reason so I can be part of the solution. This podcast is getting better and better for me, James. Let me tell you something. I mean, this is just awesome. I'm going to go home every day. Cry I, and I, I, go, I feel the feel healing. I, this is, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to come home and go, I just <laughs> What the two of you think about what I just said? I, uh, sometimes... And I don't so, mean everything. This is another James and Allison and Gino Barbara moment. We're very similar. We yes. compartmentalize. We try to get put things in a thing and we say, okay, and this is how we're solutions you oriented. You have something else to say. Okay. Right, forget, because okay. this is an important thing. Okay. And I think a lot of us have to remember this is a, is a good, it's a good thing to tell, especially your wife. If like this morning, you, you were telling me something about a difficult time and here I was giving you the solution. Remember, I didn't want the, didn't solution. Want the solution. I just wanted to hear. And that's very rare. Yes. Right. And so, so yes. I think it's OK to say to some people, and this is for everyone out there, when you call someone and tell them your issue, your difficulties, you could say, listen, I just need to talk. I'm not looking for a solution. And that is a good statement to tell. I people. really wanted to tell you that this morning. No, like, you're, you're not solving. Yeah, it. I yes. I thought you were just no. I mean, that that all being said, and I think I've told you this before. Allison is always right. Like ninety nine point <laughs> nine percent of the time, she is right. Yes. Not necessarily that I'm wrong, but she like her perspective on situations, and she might not know the 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 people involved per se or the circumstances but if i kind of tell her what's going on like i don't know how she just intuitively knows yes. kind of what the right answer is but she does and like it's it's just i mean it, I, I don't want to say it's annoying right. but it's like oh my gosh you know and 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 so even like she not only becomes my sounding board but you know she's also i mean clearly looking out for me looking out like you know, and and she has that perspective. So it, it could even be like the stuff that I'm doing on social media and she'll watch a post. You'll say, mm, James, that that really wasn't great. And like, I know deep down that she's, she's right. right. Like, Damn. I'm like, that was not that was not my best work. And like, I'm a big proponent of progress over perfection. I'm like, you know, whatever. I'm not going to do 18 takes. I'm going to do it once. That's what I have time for. And I hope it's good. It might not be great, but I'd rather get something out that's good than not at all. But then I'm like, mm, that wasn't, I could have done a little better. And she's like, yeah, I saw that post you did. And, you know, maybe you should have done this, that. And I'm like, I know. She you're sees right. the potential. <laughs> she knows what you're capable of. That's why she she's knows definitely coming on the next show. That's for sure. <laughs> Listen, before we sign off, it, where, where can, you know, the listeners get a hold of the book and you know, give us all your your uh, all your social media handles, your website, but also um, where where do you see James Nelson? Where do you see yourself going in the next three to five years? Continuing to invest in multifamily, continue to grow the brand, uh, promoting the book. Yeah, no, I I really appreciate that, and um, so and this was all over the last couple of years to try to pull all of this content and information together, um, you know, to, to help other people. So jamesnelson.com, if you go there, you're not going to see a lot of, you know, James Nelson is number one and, you know, best sales broker. 
I mean, maybe in the fine print on the, you know, the, the back of it, but you go on a page and it's how can I help you become the best investor possible, right? And you're going to see videos that are helpful. You can pre-order the book there. Actually, forget about pre-ordering. You can get it now. I keep saying pre-order. You can go to Amazon. Of course, that that that's an easy place for most people to, to shop. But yeah, and I've got my own podcast show notes there. My handles are James Nelson NYC. I'm super active on LinkedIn, which is been a really powerful network um, for our business. Uh, Instagram, I, I, you know, Twitter, you know, it, it's 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 a time thing. I would love to get on there and do more, but there's only so many hours in the day. Um, my social media team now is really pushing me to get on TikTok, so um, I bet I better learn my dance moves, and uh, you know, ho hopefully, you, you know, you'll see me there soon as well. But we'll have your wife yeah, that's, do the choreograph. I was just you. gonna ask, what does your wife say about that? Go to your wife and say, should I get on TikTok? And if she says oh, yes, man. then then you got to get on TikTok, basically. Okay. But we're not. Yeah. Yes, that's that's a good point. Yes. <laughs> Any final words? No, this you? has been a, an an amazing um, half hour or so. I I just. I do. I'm going to say something nice, if that's okay. No, I do appreciate the two of you because we do need men out there like you, you know, supporting your family, being a, a, a good steward in life, being a good example for others, you know, building the team at work, but also at home. And I, we really do need more of you. So I just thank you and encourage you to keep doing that's it. That's like the fit. I mean, I know. I don't know what. I don't know, I don't know you what's going on. You have a great weekend. I'm just, I don't yeah, know. You, you guys are on, on a, yeah, you're on a roll. So. Yes. And I, oh, I will wow. make sure that, that Allison gets, gets to listen to this too. This, this has been amazing. This has been, you know, I, I, you know, fortunately I've had the chance to be on, you know, dozens of podcasts. And I, I've got to tell you that this is unlike any other podcast interview I've had, which has been amazing. And, you know, Tina, we, we could talk business all day. I mean, yes. we, we could, we could load up hours and hours of, uh, you know, content, but th this was, well, that's you know, what the book is for. It's really the big picture. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, Go pick up Thank the book. You. I mean, that, that's what it is. I mean, like you're, you're starting from scratch. You're starting from James Nelson's from his beginning. You're sharing his story. If you're out there saying, I can't get into multifamily, it's a pie in the sky. Well, I mean, a collegiate swimmer who is D1, who his wife can thrash. He still gets in. He still gets into the Royals gate, state game. He's working at, at the company 17 years later. He's a partner. He's crushing in a very difficult market. New York City is a really hard market to do great things in, and he's been able to do that. So go out there, pick up the book, jamesnelson.com, and thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks, James. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, everyone.